We've all been cooking at home more and we're suffering, suffering from kitchen burnout. Well, coming to our rescue today is culinary arts therapist, I guess we need therapy, mm -hmm. Julie Ohana. Right. Welcome to the show, Julie. Hey, Julie. Hi. So break it down. Is this a real thing, kitchen burnout? This is definitely a real thing, especially this last year when all of so many of us have spent so much time in our own kitchens cooking and preparing and looking for a source of entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are tired of being in their kitchen. You know, Julie, let's dive in and let's get right to the tips. Now, you say number one, gift yourself a new gadget. Julie, how can this help get your groove back in that kitchen? So a big part of cooking is having fun, right? Uh -huh. You gotta make it enjoyable. You have to keep it fresh. And whether it, there's so many fun kitchen tools and gadgets on the market, whether it's a new peeler, avocado slicer, uh -huh. or something larger like a mixer or a blender, um, find a new tool and have yourself some fun and play around in the kitchen. You can also experiment with new recipes and that can help really to freshen things up and keep it exciting make it a little bit more simple and get you excited to be back in the kitchen. Well, your next tip you say is pair up with your pod. So Julie, what do you mean by that? So sometimes we forget that cooking, just like eating, sharing a meal, cooking can be a really great social activity. So let's remember to keep it that way. Whether you can cook with your partner, your spouse, your kids, neighbors, or even you know if you're still, you're in quarantine, turn mm -hmm. Zoom on and choose a friend and get cooking and really make sure that you remember to have fun with it and yeah. include people that are important in your life. No, that makes sense. Now, Julie, your final tip. You say that make foods that spark joy. Connect with a positive food memory. Julie, what are you talking about? Break that down for us. This one is probably my favorite of all of them mm -hmm. because for so many people out there, food really has a sense of connection. Yeah. Um, the, sen the sense of smell and taste is really tied to our sense of memory. Mm -hmm. So when you're cooking a dish, you know, oftentimes it can be a dish that you remember cooking with one of your parents or a grandparent or a loved one. And when you're making those recipes, you are thinking back to those fond memories. Yeah. But also when you are cooking now, whether it's with our kids or new people, you're creating memories. So if you remember to make it an activity that's gonna bring joy and meaning into your life, it's gonna be that much easier to go back to your kitchen and really make it a positive experience. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That really does. Yeah, yeah. my mom was a huge cook and we had a big family. And so some of the best memories I have are us just palling around and cutting up in the well, kitchen. Well, and those, you, you associate big meals, special yeah. meals with holidays, yeah. Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, those kind yep. of things. And uh, those are special times. Special so times. If you can go back in time, yep. good memories, it's special. Yep. Listen, Julie, great stuff, great tips. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Julie. Thanks, Thanks so much, guys.